uh, I just wanted to make a quick tutorial here about projecting textures onto a geometry um, and I want to use this one, this piece uh, to demonstrate it but before jumping into 3D code and start uh, discovering how it was made uh, I wanted to like show some of the frequently asked questions here like how I make these uh, brush strokes uh, it's actually like pretty pretty simple uh, here we have uh, a diffuse texture applied to it mm. um, and it uses the same texture as the hair so that's where the color comes from and here we have an alpha card uh, applied here and then mm, basically that's it um, and it's uh, scattered throughout the hair on the surface of the hair it's like uh, as you can see it's an instanced alpha card so it's really easy to modify and stuff like that and there is also one more technique I use uh, which is basically this uh, and what it is is uh, just uh, again the same texture as the surface below it whoops and there is an alpha attached to it and it's tiled uh, 15 times on it so if I unhide you can see that it helps breaking up the silhouette here it's really important to make something uh, painterly can you see uh, just whoops it pushes out the geometry and there we have it um, uh, yeah I think uh, those are pretty much the tools I use to make this uh, look like a, more like a painting in 3D and uh, we have a camera here or I made a camera here that goes through the scene and it's just you know discovering everything uh, slowly so if you haven't checked the music video I made with this uh, make sure to do that and uh, I hope you will enjoy the tutorial uh, see you soon and jump right in import our model head obj it's using two textures set them to 4k make sure no center snap is uh, checked so our model will be in the middle just as we exported here we have a really important box to check which is uh, orthographic and perspective view I already clicked it so rewind the video and check what I did edit projection in external editor and right below it is project through make sure it's checked also so here it is our projection now in uh, Photoshop mm. uh, I know it was a pretty quick start but you know just start dynamically and then we can slow things down a bit um, here just using the concept and making sure it snaps as closely to the model as possible just use the light map as a guide it's right above our current layer and we can see the eye sockets or mean I can see but I guess you can see also but whatever so uh, just checking that the mouth and eye and nose lines up uh, as close as possible um, here it's like really important when I model this uh, in 3ds max I just really constantly checked the model to make sure it's like as closely related or as closely as close to the concept as possible because here it's already too late or it's, it's harder to fix this fix these fix these issues it can be fixed of course but uh, just make sure it's as close as possible to the concept um, and then you you will save yourself a lot of headaches so uh, I think any second now I will uh, finish giving myself a seizure by closing this on and off any second now but whatever uh, anyway it's really important to uh, just 
put the concept behind the camera that you're using and make sure it's lined up properly here we're waiting for 3d code to import our uh, projection uh, the reason I use the orthographical view projection is because basically the concept is um, almost orthographically painted I think so most of the information I could preserve by this and there it is our rough projection turn back our turn back our uh, perspective and as you can see there is a, a, a thin seam on the neck it's a gray dot line it's really a, a really an anno annoying bug bug by 3d code but we will fix it by hitting ctrl p on the keyboard and that will export our texture into photoshop and then we just make a new layer uh, below it but here first i set the background color to the one on the concept and that way you, we can use some fake alpha so 3d codes alpha is pretty shit <clears throat> but by doing this mm, you can fake it like a like a champion so here we have kind of alphas going on but it's just a painted dark background on the hair but it looks mm, closer to the final version and that is that is what i'm after all the time in 3d code to 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 have a sense how it will look in the end and by doing this here i can already see where the issues will erupt mm, it's a good word <clears throat> so here fixing some issues of the projection but i think we will f i will f um, soon jump into photoshop as i said to fix the seams because you want to make sure that uh, you keep your projection layer separate here I call it base I believe so then we can jump jump into Photoshop sorry and make a new layer below the one called base fill it with one solid color and there it is save it and jump right back in because of the speeding up thing you didn't see it, but I filled up the layer completely with the paint bucket tool and then just hit save uh, and then this basically fix, fixes the issue because below our projection layer we have a solid uh, layer filled with one color and that gets rid of the projection seams um, which are very annoying um, also there are a few triangles missing from the backside of the model and that turns out it is, it's an issue with the OBJ exporter in 3ds Max so if you're using 3ds Max and some of the, your triangles are missing make sure you set the export settings to ZBrush there is like a little box you can hit uh, and say that you want to use preferences that are good for ZBrush and if you do it like that uh, the triangles will come back to life and they won't go missing uh, there was like 10 minutes where I had to figure this out there is always something new that uh, 3ds Max throws in my way that I had to fig have to figure out but anyway it makes it interesting uh, so here just you know picking colors and then using the brush uh, just straight onto the model here I use kind of fancy brushes but I don't think it's necessary or what I think is helpful is like try and uh, move over some of your favorite brushes from Photoshop e over into 3d code and experiment with the brush options and make them behave as closely to your Photoshop uh, or Photoshop uh, brush as you can here I did the same hit ctrl p export the hair texture and fill up the layer below the projection with one solid color and that it that fixes it uh, also i don't know if i mentioned it but when i exported this uh, i exploded the model into three parts 
the head model, the hair model and the eye model. That way you can see on the paint objects roll out right next to my brushes that I can turn on and off layers uh, or I mean parts of the model and here I decided to use projection and then one brush uh, like I used for the concept and just quickly, just really quickly block it in and rough, roughly put in the colors and values that I knew I want to use and then just hit save, wait and ta -da! we have uh, we have Voldemort removed from the backside of this uh, beautiful little young lady <coughs> I don't know why I said it like that <laughs> anyway um, just continue fixing it up I was saying something before yeah exporting the OBJ you can apply different materials to uh, your model like I applied two different materials one is called hair and one is called head obviously the head is attached to the head and hair is to the hair two completely separate UV uh, spaces and two completely separate uh, textures you can see here on the texture editor my UV for the head but I can turn it to uh, show it show the hair uh, so I can change the head rollout there and just make it hair and then it will show my uh, UVs for the hair I explained this really really badly I'm sorry for that but you know I hope you understood it basically you can use separate uh, UV islands in one 3D code file just make sure to have them attached to the model and export it as an OBJ and import the OBJ into 3D code and when you're importing it will ask you which texture should be what size and then here you just paint it regularly uh, it's really useful to know this I think and yep here just continue touching things up I added a hair bandage yes I guess that's what it's called it's going to be pink but right now it's uh, just it's the same color as the hair um, um, also I think uh, like uh, 3d code handles like lot of textures pretty well by the end of this project um, there is a, there will there is a scene inside the head which will be the tower and stuff like that and that uses four uh, five different 4k maps and the 3d code handled it pretty pretty uh, smoothly you just the same thing just hitting ctrl p selecting which texture you want to export and that's it um, I think it's uh, praise the Lord for the makers of 3D code. Uh, it's a very good software, I think. There are some issues, but overall it works pretty great. Uh, yep, yeah, later on I will use the color range selection in Photoshop um, and make the alpha for the hair with that. Mm, but it's not that important I think um, because it will be painted over and over uh, again so there is no shortcut there I think uh, yeah just roughly block in the the ear it's really important for me I think when I um, make a texture to have like a co cohesive sense of detail in most of the areas that I paint like mm, what what's in what's uh, what the, the style of rendering in the hair on the front should be similar to the style of rendering on the back right now it's kind of different because the back is much more blurrier because 3d code kind of paints a bit blurry 
to be honest but if you combine it uh, well with Photoshop you can fix these issues by just quickly jumping into Photoshop and use a fancy brush you want to and uh, fix up some of the some of the areas that you don't like but that being said I don't think you need a, you really need a, a special brush to achieve uh, anything basically it just makes it quicker but here I just uh, jumped and switched to the basic brush in 3D code and that's pretty useful as well I think for like 99% of the time I use this brush um, others are just for special cases like making uh, some of the areas in the hair or on a skin or one of the texture parts a bit more detailed or more fancy but overall it's not that important and also by jumping into Photoshop with the projection tool uh, you can apply similar rendering style as as uh, you did while you did the concept uh, at least that's what I did like I had a brush that I used for painting this uh, girl and each time I just rendered the basic shapes and forms here in 3D code and then jumped into Photoshop and added some kind of uh, stroke and details mm. also yeah I don't know if I mentioned this already but I really keep my models symmetrical for the longest I can because it's much easier to paint textures symmetrically uh, and also there are tools like the symmetrical clone tool uh, in 3d code which you can use to mirror one side of the texture over into the onto the other with like zero effort uh, and I believe here I will barf really soon like right now <coughs> and then um, I'll just jump into Photoshop with the projection use the brush I uh, use the same color whoops what was that nobody knows and then uh, use the same brush I used while painting the concept um, and make the hair kind of get more similar in feel to the front side at some random brush strokes like a pro and then just you know making it a bit more detailed and more co cohesive and there it is it's not looking good at the moment and here just use the clone tool as you can see it's pretty quick to use uh, just set it to symmetrical copy and have the symmetry on and you can rewind the video to see where the tool is I will not try and uh, explain how that little thing little icon looks because because not uh, and here just adding some more strokes I, for a long time I wasn't sure I want to render the backside of the hair but you know it's just part of the process uh, experiment with different lightings and uh, stuff like that and one will be like oh I kind of I kind of like this and it just use that uh, but for the projection I think from here on it's just the same things over and over again just uh, just establish the basic shapes in 3d code make sure you know what's where in the model and on the texture and then jump right into uh, a projection to detail it up and stuff like that make it clean uh, as as you can as clean as you can and that's the end of the video I hope I covered uh, everything you need to know uh, if not write me an email or whatever because I know I jump a lot uh, over the place and also my English is not that good but you know uh, I hope it was useful and project away well uh, surprise um, I wanted to make a quick video about clarifying some of the stuff I was mumbling about in the first one 
Uh, so let this be a quick patch for you guys. Um, so there we have the two separate uh, materials. Here the head opacity and the hair. Um, as you can see the object is broken up into separate uh, objects also. Like the hair is separate and the head is separate. Also it's snapped into the middle. Mm. The materials are close, uh, I mean they don't have textures attached to them because 3D code sometimes uh, do some, does, some, does some weird shit with the materials if they have textures applied to them. So select both of them, make sure we have the two materials applied, export, tutorial obj, and here we have the issue I was talking about about the back side uh, of the head missing a few triangles. I exported it with this settings and because I'm lazy I just switched to ZBrush and then hit export. But probably some of these, one of these uh, checkboxes would also fix the issue. So, but whatever, too lazy to figure it out. Just he, uh, use ZBrush's options. Uh, we have it exported, open up uh, 3D code model for parapixel painting, tutorial OBJ. This is what we want to check, no center snap, because otherwise some the 3D code decides to shoot your model out in the outer space. So we don't want to do that. Uh, make sure it's 4K. We have the two separate UV sets. Uh, hit OK. Wait. and then hit all which is like snapping hey and then we have the ortogra orthography queue here mm, th this is what I used for the projection let's do a quick one again but this time and this is the paint object thing here you can turn off different parts of the object um, this is the project through thing you wanna click it and then edit projection in external editor. You can customize which external editor your 3D code will open up. So if you're using GIMP, uh, I feel sorry for you, but you can also use it to combine it with uh, 3D code, at least, I think. So just hit it here, hit save, don't uh, mess around too much. And then wait for the texture to load what the fuck oh, and here it is uh, and then here we have view flat shade that way you are going to see it shaded flat <laughs> surprise um, what's happening yep here you can change the field of view for the camera on, the, on, the, on that thing. Um, so yeah, basically I just switch between brush, uh, color picker, I apply the shortcut to it, W as you can see, um, and that's it. Here we have the clone tool and you just switch this one to symmetrical copy and then make sure you have your symmetry. Whoops on. And this is why we want to have the model in the middle. And now you can like, I don't know, use it here. And then it just copies over the, the same thing on from the other side. It's really useful also. Um, and here you have the seam. As I mentioned, let's hit Ctrl P, select our head material um, and then just quickly fix this issue in Photoshop <sighs> here we have the layer the projection layer and below it we make a new one fill it with one solid color hit save and then just wait and there it is a beautiful uh, no problems whatsoever Voldemort is back again but uh, whatever so yeah it's pretty 
straightforward. There is nothing fancy I do here most of the time, just switching between a brush color picker and that's it. Just rotate the model a lot. Um, not sure what uh, other issues I have with 3D code mm, other than these. Sometimes there are some bugs, but they don't come to mind at the moment. So, yep, this is a this was just a quick fix uh, for the previous video. Uh, and yeah, have fun. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comments. I will try and answer them if I can. Um, and also, definitely watch the music video I did with this piece because I learned uh, worked a shit load of, uh, don't know how to finish this sentence, but whatever. See you guys.